what's good people izzy max here back again and finally for uh mdl season four pregame uh i'm joined as always by dan how you doing i'm doing well uh would you mind sharing your screen with me oh yeah i will um while i do that why don't you go ahead and explain kind of what this is and what it is uh what it is meant for Absolutely. So the MDL pregame uh, is something that we do before every week where we look at the uh, matchups that are coming this week. We talk about sort of general trends we expect to see within the matchup. And then both of us will pick a Pokemon from each matchup that we think is going to be uh, rather integral in prep or in performance throughout the week. So it's sort of just a preview show for the week ahead. Yeah. And uh, last season, we know there were some um, opinions about how we uh, kind of do these we're not doing them to say hey bring this hey bring that we've literally spent five seconds looking at these matchups um, and just kind of going off what we initially see we're not deep diving um, this is just our initial thoughts and uh, kind of for the people who aren't in the league uh, giving them kind of on their radar for what matches to look out for but without any further ado we're going to start with the solos and uh, we will start with me versus noah Right, so uh, one other quick note, any match that either of us are involved in, obviously we're not going to be talking about our own prep in the week, so just one person will be covering right. it, so I'll be covering this match. Although uh, this match has already occurred, the video won't be coming out until tomorrow, and I don't actually know what happened in it. So I'm just going to be shooting from the hip and guessing what I would have expected to happen in it, uh, what seemed like it would have been important. And on Noah's side, we got Tyranitar, Excadrill, Porygon 2, Gyarados, Marowak, Umbreon, Alchemy G-Max, Cradilly, Gengar G-Max, Glaceon, and Claydol. On your side, we have Melmetal, Latios, Dusclops, Pelipper, Mamoswine, Electivire, Rabombi, Salazzle, Serena, Pangoral, and Armaldo. I think for Noah, the most important option he has is going to be that Gyarados in Tier 2, which is a good value. Uh, it goes really well into a lot of your team. Uh, the Intimidate's important on the Melmetal. It hits the Mamoswine decently well. It doesn't want to see the Electivire, but it's got a decent matchup against the Rabombi. It's got decent Salazzle and Serena matchups. Pangora and Armaldo don't want to take Intimidate. So it seems like the Gyarados just is a check for some of your more threatening things into his team, because without it, uh, something like Mamoswine is really going to just roll over a lot of the options that he has uh, except for his sand mode but speaking of his sand mode uh, your easiest way to counter it is to have some weather of your own with Pelipper and I don't even think you necessarily need Armaldo with it I think offensive Pelipper looks really good because Tyranitar and Excadrill uh, don't want to take any of the hits there it doesn't get intimidated Marowak doesn't want it uh, and his low tier options uh, can deal with it okay, but I just think it's a really good check onto a lot of his high tier offensive options. So that's sort of what I see for this matchup this week. Uh, I know it's already happened, so you probably don't want to comment too much on it, but do you have anything uh, before we move on to the next one? Uh, it was just a really good game. In prep, uh, my main issues, I'll talk about kind of how, I, how I, I prepped, I guess, since I do know how the game went. But mm -hmm. in prep, uh, set up Alcremie and Gyarados were honestly my two biggest issues. I didn't really have an issue with the sand mode. Um, or the Porygon, and Marowak offensively did some damage, but defensively not really a huge issue in my prep. Um, but yeah, the game's already been uh, been hashed out. Not going to say how it goes. You'll have to check my video for that, um, which will either come out later tonight or early tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it was a good game. I will say that at least. But moving on will be my solo appearance. This is going to be Dan versus Hector. Um, so Dan's squad here has the Zamazenta, Kirum, Primarina, Silvalli, Gigalith, Magmortar, Sableye, Rotom Fan, Gorgeist, Stoutland, and Steelix. And on Hector's side, we have Blastoise, G-Max, <coughs> Togekiss, sorry, I am getting over a sickness, so I might start coughing, uh, Togekiss, Darmanitan, Galarian, uh, Regirot, Comfey, Crocodile, Togedemaru, Frostlass, Talonflame, Appleton, and Sandaconda. Uh, for the Kimon, I did end up picking the Kiram for you. Um, I didn't really want to pick the Zamazenta because there are uh, some decent answers to it that you really don't want to see in the Togekiss and the Comfey. They can do decent damage uh, because they are hitting on that special side. But the Kiram with Freeze Dry just kind of looks like it hits a whole lot of things. Um, of course, it doesn't want to see the Darmanitan, but Darmanitan's super frail. Um, so if you're behind um, maybe like a Tailwind or something from the Silvalli, I do think Kiram just kind of goes in and cleans up a lot of what Hector has. 
Uh, and on Hector's side, I did end up picking the G-Max Blastoise. Uh, whether it be supportive or offensive, I do think it does pose a decent issue uh, for you and your squad. If it is set up Shell Smash next to a Togekiss, um, its options for offense into your team look incredibly good. Um, it hits, I believe, pretty much everything, uh, either super effective or just hard neutral damage. Um, so depending on what set this Blastoise is, I do think it does um, kind of just put in a lot of work. But in the first week, it's really hard to, to kind of gauge uh, Dan, your team, because Zamazenta Kyurem, we really don't know what it, what those two can do in a VGC style format. Um, so this is one of the matches I'm kind of excited to see, kind of um, excited to see what options Hector's has, because a lot of his mons do operate in multiple different ways but uh that's kind of my my two cents on this dan uh give me just kind of kind of the run over yeah i haven't done a lot of prep yet this week uh i i do think curum looks decent to a lot of options so there's uh a decent chance it comes this week probably uh but there are a couple low tiers i'm looking at on both teams that i actually think are likely to have a lot of leverage in this match mm -hmm. uh but once again, you'll have to see my video once that match gets played next weekend uh, and it comes out to actually see if that comes to fruition. Yep. Moving on, Dan, why don't you take this next one? It is going to be Jess and Tay. Yeah, so we've got uh, Jess and Tay. Jess has the Mew, Garchomp, Mimikyu, Togetic, Snorlax, GMAX, Zarud, Moltres, Magnezone, Vaporeon, Toxicroak, Aurorus. Tay has the Jirachi, Tapufini, Volcrona, Dragonite, Cresselia, Tangrowth, Blissey, Zoroark, Luxray, Palaswine, and Beware. Uh, for my key mons, this matchup, and sort of a trend I'm doing throughout these videos, is I'm trying to pick uh, not necessarily the other tier 1s, since you pick tier 1s in basically every one. Uh, I've, I've tried to pick some lower tier options that I think uh, at least are going to be very important in prep to consider, not necessarily the most important in the game, but ones that have the potential to be. Mm. And I picked uh, the Zarud on Jess's side because it really just hits a lot of Tay's team really hard. Like, it hits the Jirachi, it really hits the Feeny. Volcron is bad news for it, uh, and Dragonite's not great for it, but it can deal with the Cresselia, it can deal with the Tangrowth decently well. Uh, and the low-tier options, it, it fights on a pretty level footing with as well. So I think Zarud is going to be one of those potential leverage options where... It is a tier three, but it it hits very hard for a tier three. So I think it has the options and the coverage for Jess to potentially be a good option. And for Tay, I picked the Jirachi because uh, we don't know what the Mew is going to do. And the Garchomp is going to be very decent into it. But the rest of Jess's team doesn't really like dealing with Jirachi at all. Like Mimikyu doesn't like it. Degetic really doesn't like it. Snorlax isn't going to be a huge fan. Uh, Zarud's okay into it. Uh, Moltre, so is Moltres, but Magnezone, Vaporeon, Toxicroak, Aurorus, none of those are going to like facing the Jirachi. So I think the Jirachi is going to be a very limiting factor for Jess in building because uh, Max with 100, 100, 100 bulk is going to be really tough to break through if that's the direction that Tay decides to go. But why don't you tell me a little bit about Mew and Tapu Fini? Yeah, so... The Mew here is just 100% a wild card. It's going to be a wild card every week, um, but specifically this one because you do need a lot of those coverage options um, to kind of just deal with what Tay has. Um, like you did say, the Jirachi is a huge threat, um, but coming down to it, I think the Finny actually is a decent counter to um, this Mew, just mostly in the bulk category. Um, Again, Mew has to tech a lot of coverage in order to, to counter a lot of these offensive threats. And Finny doesn't look like a normal offensive threat. It's a bulky mon. So I'm thinking this might be one of those options that just doesn't have a tech move from the Mew. Um, again, it does kind of falter in the eyes of that Zarud you picked. But also Zarud is weak to fairy. Um, so if it could get in mm. uh, kind of some different situations, maybe under Trick Room... Um, or maybe Dragonite setting up a couple, um, airstreams, uh, just different options for the Finny to kind of outspeed or underspeed. This is a rude, um, I do think it can kind of just kind of sit there and be a huge threat. Um, but 
again, I think it all comes down to the Mew and what it's packing. Um, and this match is going to be interesting. Uh, Tay's had a, a season off, so he might need to knock some rust off, but I, I do think this is going to be a good game. Moving on, we have Raz versus Burst. Uh, this is my match to watch for the week, um, but I did end up picking the two flying options in Tornadus and Archeops. Uh, Raz does have the Tornadus, Metagross, Keldeo, uh, G-Max, Grimmsnarl, Regidrago, uh, Electabuzz, Marowak, Cantonian, Trevenant, Toracat, Frostmoth, and Dunsparce, and Burst has Landorus Eye, uh, Rillaboom, G-Max, Politoed, Snorlax, Kingdra, Aromatisse, Magmar, Hitmonlee, uh, Copperaja, Archeops, and Manetric. So, um, this match is going to come down to who has speed control. Uh, which is going to be kind of awkward for both uh, sides because on Raz's side, you do want that speed control, but you also want to kind of proc your Metagross. Uh, and then on the other side, if Burst is able to get up that Tailwind from maybe the Archeops uh, or set some Airstreams from the Landorus that I see you picked, um, I do think that Burst is going to have some feasible options to deal with Raz's offense. Uh, but we've already seen how good Tornadus Metagross as a combo is. Uh, and I'm expecting it to be just as good into this team. Um, Metagross would have been my other pick. Again, I know you said I'm picking a lot of the tier ones, but I do have Archeops uh, on burst side. But overall, I just think this matchup is going to come down to uh, the speed advantages. Um, but why don't you go tell me about the Grimmsnarl and Landorus? Yeah, I really didn't want to pick Metagross because it seems so obvious. Right. But looking at burst side, what is the best thing into the Metagross? Well... He doesn't have a lot of good answers, but Landorus hits it really hard. And I think that's about as good as he can expect because, uh, so, so that's going to be his most important option is to hit it as hard as possible. And on the special side, Land, uh, Metagross isn't the most bulky thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. It's very bulky, especially very physically bulky, but a life orb earth power from sheer force Landorus is going to do a huge chunk, even if it is maxed. And it's probably going to one shot it if it's not maxed. So... When I'm looking at Raz, I'm like, okay, what is the most important thing in this matchup? It's to keep the Metagross alive, but that means that doesn't make the Metagross the most important thing. It makes whatever keeps the Metagross alive the most important thing. So I actually think this GMAX Grim Snarl with the ability to set some screens is going to be really good. And also, I think it could flex offensive as well, because something like Max Dark, Max Fairy, Max Grass mm -hmm. covers so much of Burst's team that I think if you've got those options and then something like Light Screen on it, just spitballing here, and you could run it either way, uh, it's going to be really hard for Burst to prep for, and it's going to give Raz a lot more flexibility in this matchup than you'd think, where it looks like it's just a Tornadus, Tailwind, Max Metagross, then Brutal Swing the next turn. I don't think that's his only option. And I think the fact that this Grimstall can do both things is going to make his team tougher to prep for this week. 100%. And I do really like the Grimstall. Um, but moving on, you have Dina and Dark. Yeah, so this is a very interesting matchup with Melmetal, G-Max, Tapu Koko, Hatterene, Raichu, A, uh, Mail and DD, War Turtle, Guzzlord, Vanillax, Thievil, Bear Tick, Kingler, G-Max, Victini, Urshifu, Shingle Strike, Melodic, Corviknight, Gudra, Fungus, Pincurchin, Slurpuff, Golur, Carbink, and Shininja. Uh, for Dina's side, this is easy. It has to be Tapu Koko in my mind. Uh, I know it's a it's another tier one, but uh, it doesn't hit Victini. But well, actually, it can because it can get Max Darkness. But a Max Tapu Koko hits Urshifu super effective, Milotic super effective, Corviknight super effective, Gudra super effective, Fungus super effective. Uh, Pinkurchin is fine. Uh, it can hit the Slurpuff, it can hit the Golurk, it can hit the Carbink, uh, and it can hit the Shit Ninja. I, I mean, that's really all I've got to say about it. It can hit everything, it's going to be her best offensive option this week, and it's faster than everything that's on Dark's team. So for Dark, because of that, I make Golurk his option, because for the Tapu Koko to hit the Golurk, it has to be running Special and Grass Knot, which isn't going to be the best thing in the world, but Max Overgrowth is going to really hurt the Golurk. But if it's not, a no-guard Golurk using something like High Horsepower or Rock Slide, that's going to deal a lot of damage, even to a Max uh, Tapu Koko, and if you Max this Golurk, uh, it's just going to 
eviscerate Tapu Koko. So I think Golurk is his best Koko answer, and because of that, it's going to be his most important Pokemon, because Koko is just so obviously good into his team. Yeah, but, so... Uh, what, yeah. yeah. That... The Koko almost made me pick Pink Kirchen, uh, because the Koko does have such a good matchup. Um, but I didn't. I ended up going War Turtle and the Urshifu G Max Single Strike. Um, and for the for the main reason that I don't think Raichu redirecting hits for this game uh, is going to be really feasible uh, because there are a lot of ways that the uh, Raichu can go down. Um, I get it. It's probably going to be Focus Ash or whatever. But I do think the War Turtle actually has a bit of an easier time redirecting a lot of these hits. Um, outside of the Pink Kirchen, nothing really hits it for stab super effective. Actually, nothing does. Um, so I really think that the War Turtle redirecting hits, um, not letting this Urshifu on the other side, uh, hit the Melmetal. Um, it could do a good bit of damage to the Coco with like a poison jab. Um, but it one shots Hatterene, one shots Raichu, one shots Ndidi, one shots Guzzlord, one shot Vanillix, one shot Thievul. Uh, bear tick and probably kingler to be honest um and it does a very good chunk if not one shots the mel metal as well so that's kind of why i picked the urshifu almost for the same reason you picked the uh coco um so i do think these are going to be the the marquee um offensive options for both squads uh, but if you're able to redirect uh, a lot of these hits maybe your coco goes down early to just a random hit from something um, I do think that the, the War Turtle is going to be key to not just kind of get swept by this Urshifu. Um, yeah, that's kind of... I think this is going to be a weird one. It's going to come down to who can set up what they want to do first. Um, moving along, we have Ryan and Toxic. So Ryan is rocking the Celesteela, Latios, Raichu, uh, Arcanine, Azumarill, Nidoking, Persian, Koffer, Gurgis, Passimian, Mr. Mime, Galar, and Lorantis. And Toxic is rocking the Necrozma, Indeedy Female, Zapdos Galarian, Escavalier, Diggersby, Lipard, Crobat, Arctazolt, Poltegeist, Sharpedo, and Abomasnow. So, uh, fair warning, I'm not going to say too much about this one because I do kind of know how Ryan is prepping. Uh, but I did end up picking just the two tier ones. I do think these are going to be the main offensive options. Um, and they kind of each counter each other. So we do have the Celesteela and the Necrozma. Celesteela looking down the board toxic doesn't really have a fire type to deal with it uh and then the electric type ends up just being kind of arctazolt um and with necrozma having access to heat wave <clears throat> and just a massive special stat um i do feel like necrozma can be an issue to ryan's main source of offense granted i do know ryan has some things in the works so i'm not going to say too much but i do think these two are going to be uh marquee offensive options uh, and whichever one goes off first, I, I do believe it's going to be the victor here. But uh, like I said, I kind of know what's going on on Ryan's side, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But uh, Dan, why don't you go ahead and touch up on uh, Persian and Arctazolt? Yeah, so Toxic needs an answer for Celesteela and Latios, and Arctazolt provides those. If he can get a bulk beep off into the Celesteela, really big if because there's a Raichu on the other side. But if he can manage it, it's going to hurt a lot. Uh, Celesteela is bulky, but bolt beak off of i don't know life orb uh result that's just gonna that's that's still gonna chunk it but for ryan's side this persian looks like it can just do a lot of work it's immune to any psi spam shenanigans the zapdos hits it really hard but it's still got its ability so it's only being hit neutral by it effectively and a lot of the lower tier options just don't want to deal with the shenanigans that an Alolan Persian can do. So it can shut down his best, like, easy win offensive mode by itself, and it can just deal with a lot of shenanigans and give Ryan a lot of control over the game that lets him pick his spot for the Celesteela. Because I do think this match is going to be centralized around Celesteela. I just think the Alolan Persian is going to be his best way to just make sure that the Celesteela is going to be maxing in a position where it's going to be effective. Uh, and on to like I said about Toxic, Arc Results is only great Celesteela answer, so he's gonna have to he's gonna have to leverage it pretty hard. Yep. So why don't you continue with Charles and Anthony? 
Yeah, so Charles has an interesting team with Genesect, Tapu Lele, Blastoise, Terrakian, Celebi, Driftblim, Weavile, Nita Queen, Jolteon, Turtonator, and Audino. Where Anthony has Dragapult, Venusaur G Max, Barrascuda, Colossal G Max, uh, Canto Nine Tails, Rylou, Male Meowstic, Deancey, Scissor, Scully Feed, and Greedent. So this is my match of the week. Uh, Burst and Raz was the other contender for me. But this is going to be, I, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting matchup because uh, on Anthony's side, you have the Scizor, which defensively looks really good against a lot of what Charles does and offensively hits a lot of what Charles has as well. And Anthony's team is really fast, really wants to go first a lot of the time, but it doesn't have that great fast speed control option, whereas Charles does with this Drift Blim. I think that just the Drift Blim in terrain, get up Tailwind, that's going to be... I don't know, it feels like it's really key for his plan, because with Tailwind, he can just start having, you know, Nido Queen being the fastest thing on the field, and that's going to kill a lot of things if if that's the case. Or this Terrakion is going to be really fast, or fast Genesect with options to potentially have a fire-type mm -hmm. move. So, I think... Charles has a lot of different offensive options, but all of them need Tailwind to be very effective in Anthony's team, which is why I picked Drift Blim. And for Anthony, I, I just think this Scizor defensively has good typing while it hits a lot of things hard. Yes, it doesn't want to deal with psychic terrain, but it doesn't need to run priority moves either. But uh, you picked the Tapu Lele and the Dragapult. Yeah, so this was one I really didn't want to pick the tier ones in because I do think there are so there are just a lot of options on both sides. Um, but after looking at kind of the offensive matchup of the Lele, uh, if Tailwind goes up, Lele kind of just goes in on everything that isn't named Colossal. Um, it, I, I mean, I guess Nine Tails to an extent, but with the offenses that Lele can um, kind of produce, Dragapult, Venusaur, Riolu. Um, even Deancey, maybe Scizor, Scolipede, they don't want to be taking hits from this thing. Uh, and like I said, if it's under a Tailwind, it's it's going to be outspeeding a lot of these options. Um, and then for Anthony, I did end up picking the Dragapult, not so much for its offensive pressure, pressure uh, but for more of its support set this week. Um, if Anthony can maybe get up screens or set up the Colossal or, you know, just be a menace, um, I do believe Charles is going to have kind of a rough time with it. Um, Dragapult is one of the most versatile mons. Even if it's ran special, it can hit literally everything Charles has. Um, it's kind of like the Mew in that aspect on the special side. It gets really good options. Um, but no matter what set the Dragapult is running, I do think it will be a menace uh, for Charles to kind of deal with. Um, and if Charles can't get that tail can't get tailwind up i do think it's going to be an issue uh for for charles to answer some of these offensive threats that anthony does end up having uh but moving on i think this is our last one and it's going to be john versus gumi um surprise surprise i actually didn't pick the tier ones you did this time uh but john has marshadow thunderous eye gothitel duraladon mr mime drampa klefki obstagoon lilligant seismitoad and santaconda and Gumi has Zeraora Naganadel, Grimmsnarl, Volcanion, uh, uh, Tornadus T, Vikavolt, Runarigus, Delmai, Skarmory, Avalog, and Polyrath. Um, for my for my two mons, I ended up picking Duraludon and Volcanion. Um, Duraludon actually has an interesting matchup into a lot of what Gumi wants to do. Um, it's neutral to Dragon. Um, not going to take a whole lot of damage from the Zeraora. Does have decent special defense uh, and can kind of just launch off a lot of really good uh, hits into Gumi's side. Um, there's not any redirection that the Duraludon really has to, I guess, compete with. Um, the Stalwart doesn't, isn't really going to come into effect here. Um, but looking at the options, I just think Duraludon does have um, some key uh, offensive pressure to just kind of go in, um, especially next to that Mr. Mime or some Clef key support. Um, and I just think it's a, I think it's a really good matchup. Um, and then on Gumi's side, I did end up picking the Volcanion um, for kind of the same options, but mostly for the the defensive cap uh, capabilities of this Mon. Uh, I ran into this in the uh, multi battle league, 
and this thing does not die to a single hit, even if it's super effective and can really launch off some good hits. I think it does get uh, access to like flash cannon, but it is hitting the Duraludon on the special side, can deal with the Mr. Mime, um, can kind of go one-on-one -on -one with the Marshadow depending on what the Marshadow has. Uh, Thunderous, like you picked, is kind of the biggest uh, obstacle for uh, the Volcanion to, to work around, but I do think with some good placement and good play, uh, the, this Volcanion can really go unchecked. Um, but you picked the two electric options, so why don't you go ahead and talk about those. So Gumi and I also played in a recent uh, MBC mini-season where we had a Zero Aura uh, Volcanion team. So I know he knows how to pilot it, and I know that he knows that Zero Aura is the best switch in for Volcanion because it's got an electric immunity. Uh, but I do think uh, John is going to need to leverage the offensives of the Thunderous to threaten the Volcanion because Volcanion does run over a lot of his team. Uh, and I picked the Zero Aura both for the offenses. It threatens a lot of John's team with uh, how fast it is. It's going to be the fastest thing on the field. And even though its attack stat isn't the best, Plasma Fist still hits like a truck into anything that takes it neutrally. But more so for that Volt Absorb, where it's going to be able to switch in for the Volcanion, keep it safe, make it hard to target electric attacks into it if he could potentially have that Zero Aura in the back. Uh, on top of that, it's got a really good offensive options. It's got access to Fake Out, Plasma Fist, obviously. Play Rough is going to hit decently into this team, especially looking at that Marshadow and that Drampa, things that uh, might not necessarily just fold to Plasma Fist. And it's also got access to close combat for the Drampa or for the Obstagoon if it wants it. So it's got a lot of good offensive options. And despite being more frail than a lot of the other things, it is very very good defensively as a switch in for that Volcanion. Uh, so that's that's my thoughts on this matchup. It's They just work really well uh, with one another. Yeah, so this is our last matchup. We already touched on our key matchups. Uh, for you, was it the Ryan Toxic? Charles and Anthony. No, okay. it's Charles Anthony. Yeah, so our two ma uh, marquee matchups are going to be the Charles Anthony and the Raz Burst matchup. Um be on the lookout for those. Uh, not much has been scheduled yet. This is the first week. If you've also noticed, uh, these are all cross-division play. Um, we will have cross-divisions on week one and whatever the last week of the season is. Um, but next week, we will go into actual division play. Um, but I'm excited for week one. Uh, there are a lot of really, really good matchups, and uh, I'm just excited for this season. I think this is going to be one of the better seasons. Um, but... Any closing words for you? No, I am looking forward to getting back into it this season and seeing exactly what uh, Kiram and Zim is meant to do. Yeah, yeah, I really need to see what those two mons can actually do. But uh, without further ado, I will get this uploaded and uh, we'll be breaking into our first matches uh, pretty much right after this. Uh, this is uploaded and able to be viewed. So without further ado, we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.